If you're a web developer, you've almost certainly used XML HTTP requests. But without a library wrapping XHR, it's a pain in the butt. It requires a bunch of setup, needs calls to both open and send, and worst of all, the name. Why does it even have XML in the name? Chances are you didn't use it to transfer XML. So now we have a new modern design API for network requests, fetch. The new Fetch API makes this much easier with a simple, cleaner API that separates the request from the response and uses promises to avoid the hassles of callbacks. So let's go fetch some data. The Fetch API is pretty easy to use. Simply call Fetch and provide the URL that you want to fetch and optionally any parameters that you need to provide. Fetch then returns a promise with the response object that contains details about the response, such as the status code, headers, and other metadata. Plus, it provides access to the response stream with an understanding of what type of data it is. For example, since my data is JSON, I'll ask for response.json, which returns a promise to get that data. If you haven't guessed by now, promises are integral to the way that fetch works. If you're unfamiliar with promises, check out this post on HTML5 Rocks. One of the neat things that you can do with promises is to chain them. For fetch, this means that you can share logic across different fetch requests. Instead of checking the status of a response with an inline function, I'll create a separate function that checks the status code and returns a promise. I'll do the same thing to get the JSON object from the response stream. Now I can simplify the fetch request quite a bit. I'll make the fetch, check the status code to make sure I got a 200 OK, get the JSON, and then handle the result. If anything goes wrong along the way, I can catch the error and deal with it. In addition to the request URL, you can also pass fetch a set of options. With the options object, I can set the method used, add HTTP headers, set the body of the request, add credentials, even control how cross-domain requests are handled. For example, to use fetch to post the results of some user input along with an OAuth token, I would use method colon post, headers colon authorization, followed by some ugly string, and body colon the data that I want to post. Making cross-domain requests with fetch uses the same policies as XML HTTP requests, verifying that the correct course headers are present before returning the promise. It sets the response.type to course, indicating it was a successful cross-domain request. But if the correct headers aren't set, then the fetch will fail and you won't be able to access the status or read the data returned. I can also tell the browser specifically how I want it to handle cross-domain requests with one of four mode options. I can set mode colon same origin to ensure that only requests made to the same origin are possible. Anything else is rejected. I can set mode colon cores to allow requests for assets on the same origin and on other origins which return the appropriate headers. I can force pre-flight checks to always occur with mode colon cores with force pre-flight. But there's also a mode no cores to get data from a server that doesn't support cores, but this results in an opaque response. You won't be able to read the data returned or view the status of the request. This might seem odd, but when caching results in a service worker, this is a very helpful feature. There you go. Fetch is pretty easy to use. There are still a few gotchas though that you need to be aware of. Like all new features, it's not available everywhere yet, but support is growing quickly. So be sure to use feature detection to see if it's there. If not, you can use the polyfill. The other big gotcha is that you can't cancel a fetch request but it is in the spec, so it should land at some point in the future. So go give Fetch a shot and save yourself a few callbacks.